Insulin resistance is very common in our society and can lead to increased belly fat and difficulty losing our belly fat, but also diabetes, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, any cardiovascular complication, you name it, as well as dementia. Um, and so it's a very important thing that we need to be talking about more. And so today I'm talking about some supplements and nutrients that you can add into your diet and your lifestyle to help improve your body's response to insulin to hopefully also help lower those risks and lower that excess belly fat. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks for joining me on my channel. Um, I talk about gut health and hormone health on this channel and functional medicine. I'm a registered dietitian. I am a family medicine doctor and I'm a functional medicine doctor. So welcome if it's your first time and welcome back if you're returning. I really appreciate your support. Remember to um, share, to like, to subscribe, and to hit the bell to be notified when I so you, you can be notified when I post a new video every week. So today we are talking about a very important in, uh, hormone, insulin, that I have been talking about already. I've already done the deeper dive into what insulin is and insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. So if you haven't seen those videos, I will link them and I have a playlist. So please check those out because I don't want to be too repetitive today. But basically, if you are not sensitive to your insulin, then it can't do its job. It can't remove sugar from your blood and put it into hopefully more so your muscles, but there's only so much that can go into your muscles and put it into your, um, you know, give sugar to your brain and your liver and everywhere else. But when there's too much sugar and, the, and it can't be stored in the muscles and go to the brain and all that, um, then we store it as body fat or, in, or as fat in our liver. So we can get fatty liver and that belly fat and that can come from insulin resistance, and then it can also feed into more insulin resistance. So insulin is very, very important. And we, in the last video, I talked about ways to change, last two videos, talked about ways to change your lifestyle and your diet to support um, better insulin sensitivity. One thing I didn't cover as far as lifestyle goes, and I will highlight this up front, is to make sure you look at your stress and your sleep. So be sure you're sleeping that seven to nine hours and getting restful sleep and make sure you're examining your stress. Stress is such a big factor, and I promise I will go into the supplements too, but stress is such a big factor that I, I myself not only experience, all of you do, I'm sure, but that it's not addressed as much. It's not put on our priority list as high as it should be. And I see that with my patients day in and day out, like, what are you doing for stress management? Well, nothing. Or I'm exercising a lot. Well, exercising a lot, good for you in a lot of ways, good for your insulin sensitivity, but you know, a lot of times can worsen your stress. So you want to look at what kind of exercise, but that's a whole different topic that I've talked about in my cortisol videos. But when you're thinking about insulin sensitivity, definitely think about your stress, stress levels as well and do whatever you can, deep breathing, better sleep, meditation, changing your job, getting toxic relationships rid out of your life. Um, is very important and don't forget the importance of stress management. Okay, now that I'm off my soapbox for that, let's talk about some supplements. And so by the end of this video, you'll have five ideas for supplements you can try, not necessarily all at once. You wanna try um, one or the other or maybe add on top of each other some of them. Um, and I'll talk about some of the synergistic effects of some of them, but you'll have five ideas on what you can do to um, add supplements in for better insulin support and insulin um, sensitivity and better blood sugar support and better metabolism. So what is my number one? You're, if you are a um, long time viewer, you probably are so sick of me saying that, but saying this, but fiber, that's the number one. So soluble fiber in particular. Now soluble fiber can be found in all fruits and veggies, whole grains, beans, um, nuts, seeds, but it's and it, and it helps to bulk up um, our diet, help with, you know draw more water in, and help with smoother and easier bowel movements. And in order to have just a better metabolism, a better detoxification system, a better weight, we need those good bowel movements. But we also need to feel full, and feeling full can help us lose weight and improve our insulin resistance. Because even a small amount of weight loss, you know, five ten percent of your body weight can drastically improve your insulin sensitivity. So that is super important. But fiber also, um, in addition to all of those things, it lowers our blood sugar after a meal. So having a good high fiber meal 
or adding a supplement of fiber to our meal can help lower our blood sugar. And then we feel full also. And so we have that feeling full and that lower blood sugar and that improves our insulin sensitivity um, because, you know, feeling full, we're not going to eat as much. And then lowering our blood sugar is going to improve our insulin response. So fiber is really important. Um, most Americans only get dietary fiber of like 15 grams a day. And our goal is anywhere between like 30 and 35 grams a day, if not a little bit more. So tracking fiber, I like to use my fitness pal with my patients. I like carb managers, another good app that will track it and track your fiber and just do an average day and see, you know, how you're doing, like what's your average. So look at that and see where you start and then try to get yourself up to that 30 to 35 grams. A supplement I like to use for fiber um, is there's one called um, Sun Fiber. It's a trademarked uh, high PHGG guar gum, basically. Really helpful in SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So it's really helpful for your gut balance. Dissolves instantly. It's in what I was just drinking. I can't even taste it because uh, I put in my tea. And really can give you some of that soluble fiber. It gives you six, seven grams of fiber. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're only trying to reach for 30 to 35 grams, you know, we want a lot of it to come from your diet because we want a nutrient dense diet of fruits and veggies and nuts and seeds, you know, low sugar fruits. But, um, we also sometimes need that extra help, and this is a very digestible fiber, so I'll have a link down below to that. Um, number two, let's talk about ginger. Ginger is a root, obviously, that we can use to cook or to put in our tea or to, you know, use in different, as, a, as a spice, but it's also a blood sugar manager. <laughs> um, it helps to lower blood sugar, um, helps to improve insulin sensitivity, you want to be cautious adding a ton of ginger first off because it is a blood thinner. So you want to keep it at, you know, less than four grams is safe. And then if you do, if you're in the early stages of insulin um, resistance or overproduction of insulin and you have low blood sugar, ginger is going to lower that blood sugar as are a lot of the supplements I talk about here. So be cautious. Um, but if you're in full fledged insulin resistance or, you know, have definitely been told you have high blood sugar sometimes and have those signs that I've talked about in the other videos of high blood sugar, then, you know, ginger will be your friend. Just use it in moderation. It can cause a little bit of um, burning sometimes in the throat. So, if, you know, if it does that for you or in kind of gastric distress, just lower the dose on it. So if your tummy's a little bit upset, usually it helps with nausea. You use it a lot for that. But, um, you know, lower your dose. Generally, you know, it's in 500 milligrams. If you're doing a capsule, the extract, ginger root extract, it's like 500 milligrams in a capsule. So you take, could take, you know, one of those twice a day or two of those twice a day. Just play around with what feels most comfortable, but don't go above that 4,000 milligrams or four grams. So yeah, the studies show that um, it can help improve our insulin sensitivity and lower our blood sugar. Um, number three, as far as supplements you can add in. Oh, and speaking of, um, you know, blood sugar and, in, and the association between insulin um, resistance and our gut health, which I will talk about more in the next, so I'm soon speaking of in the next point, um, my Trust Your Gut course, which you may have been familiar with and you can check out on my website, is available at a much more affordable rate. I'll have a link down below. That will help you with bloating, abdominal pain, belly fat itself, improving your insulin sensitivity, lowering your weight, um, lessening any symptoms of um, like very being intolerant to food, certain foods or improving diarrhea and constipation. All those things are addressed as well as persistent yeast in the, in the gut. Um, all that's addressed in videos, resources, PDF. So check that out in the link down below. So uh, gut health, can be improved by this following herb I'm going to talk about. And I have a whole another video coming up just on this herb because it's so fascinating. But gut health and insulin sensitivity and cardiovascular health and weight can all be improved by this herb. And that's called berberine. Um, it's so, as, like I said, more to come on this, but it definitely improves your insulin sensitivity um, for your liver and your muscle tissues for, you know, picking up that glucose helps to balance your microbiome. And I've seen it do wonders on cholesterol and LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. So it's really a win-win situation. Now there are um, mixed studies on how long you should take it. So I'd say discuss that with your provider because it is good at balancing that microbiome, but we don't want it to be too strong for too long. And maybe it kills off some good bacteria not really a lot of studies to show that it does do that, but that's a whole other topic that I'll talk about in the next video. 
but it definitely has a lot of metabolism benefits for you. It's not a wonder drug as far as weight loss goes, but if you have a really high BMI, meaning um, you know your body mass index, it, that's where the studies have shown like a BMI of a 30 or higher, it can lower weight. And then you know a few pounds, it's not going to be a wonder drug or anything. Otherwise, it would be you know flying off the shelves. But all these other benefits, plus you'll learn even more benefits in my next video. It's, the research on it was so fun to do. So um, taking a look at Berberine and seeing if you can incorporate that. I have some reputable brands that I like to you know, recommend versus just kind of going to the store or Amazon and picking out one. Um, so I will list those in the description down below too because you do want a good source of berberine that has some other ingredients in there because it can be hard to absorb sometimes. But very beneficial for all of those things, so that's one thing you can add in. Usually the dose is 500 milligrams with every meal. You want to have it with a meal because that's when it really helps to your blood sugar and your insulin sensitivity. Number four you may have heard of, um, chromium. So that was on and off the good list at times for helping blood sugar and diabetes and insulin sensitivity. So the studies are mixed um, with human and animal studies as far as results, but it tends to be very effective in people that already have diabetes, have pre-diabetes, um, and it improves your insulin sensitivity and it improves your insulin resistance. But if you don't have high blood sugar yet, um, it may not be as effective for you, but a lot of people that probably watching this video may are already have some mildly abnormal blood sugars and some high insulin, so it will be effective for you in that case. So studies show anywhere between 200 and 1,000 milligrams. Um, dosing for that are good, um, but you do want to talk with your provider with any of this stuff. Any of my videos, any of my recommendations, I don't know you as a patient, so you're going to talk to have to talk to your provider about this. Um, but it synergistically works really well with my next one I'm going to talk about, which is magnesium. Magnesium is deficient in so many of us. It's, it, our soil is just not rich in magnesium anymore. It's just over farmed, over worked, not, you know, nutrient rich. So, sorry, magnesium is necessary for so many pathways in our body. And, um, it is, uh, I use it for improving health of the lungs, of the heart, of the gastrointestinal tract, because it helps bowel movements happen. But also for insulin sensitivity, it's really good for that. And a lot of us don't know that we're deficient, and, and we can be. So I'd recommend, you know, looking at that with your doctor, your magnesium levels can be tested, even your chromium levels can be tested. But using a combo of magnesium and um, chromium can be really helpful for improving your insulin sensitivity. The range usually for safety or for usual supplementation is like 400 to 800. It can be anywhere from 200 to 800 for magnesium. You can go all the way up to like 1200 to 1600, but I've only really used that high of a dose when I see a really clinically deficient patient. So you definitely want to test your levels because you can overdo anything. Of course, any of this stuff you can overdo. So you want to stick within, you know, the guidelines. Um, and your body will often tell you when you've ever done magnesium because it will have, you will have a very loose bowel movement if you've overdone magnesium. So definitely paying attention and watching your magne or watching your bowel movements are a good way to know your, your sweet spot for magnesium. So I hope these were all helpful. If you have questions on insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance, please um, message me down below and let me know in the comments. I mean, I can't individually deal with you you help you with your health problems because I'm not your doctor, but just general questions on these. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, please join me in my future videos. Like I said, I have one coming up on berberine. If you haven't reviewed the other insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance videos, please do that. My gut health videos, hormone health, check out the trust your gut link down below. Um, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post future videos. Please like this video if you liked it and I'll see you next week.